Hi guys, new video for you today. Um, this time I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about this, which is the Kinefinity Mavo LF. And it's a pretty brand new camera released in the sort of end of 2018 by Kinefinity. And first impressions are really, really good. I'm super impressed and super excited about this camera. So I, I sort of decided to go with Kinefinity because the specs of this camera are insane. It's it's a full frame sensor, so it's large format, 6K, and it's around 10 grand body only, which is just mad. So yeah, I got this delivered just before Christmas, and I've shot a bunch of test stuff in my kitchen and tried out various frame rate and resolution combinations with the different codecs and on different SSDs. Um, and so far, it's been great, the image looks great, the camera has been really reliable, I've, I've had no real issues, apart from when I first took it out of the box and set everything up, uh, my first Kinibac, one of the SDI ports was bent, and the other unbent SDI port wouldn't actually send any video signal to my Shogun Inferno monitor, but then I got in touch with Pro-V and I said to them, look, here's some photos of the bent port, um, I've just taken it out of the box, what can I do? And they said, look, send your Kinney back, back to us, and we're shipping you a new one out today, so that'll be with you, like, tomorrow. So it sort of started to be sorted in less than an hour, and then the entire thing was resolved less than 24 hours later, which is just, like, incredible customer service from Pro-AV. Like, I was really impressed. But since getting this second Kinney back unit, Soon as I fitted this and tested it, it's worked perfectly. I've had zero issues with it since then. Apart from that, my only gripe so far is some of the buttons on the camera don't feel that tactile and they just feel a little cheap. But I mean, that's me comparing them to like Alexa buttons or red buttons that are just like super nice. I mean, people complain about the buttons on the Ursa Mini. Um, and it's that same sort of not exactly tactile feel, which is, you know, it's a minor gripe and it, it's something that I can get used to, um, especially the scroll wheel on the side grip. There's a few times where I'll scroll too far or not far enough and I'll, I'll miss the setting I want because it's it just doesn't feel that good. But, you know, that's such a minor gripe on what is an incredible camera. So let's talk SSDs. Obviously, the proprietary Kinemag is what Kinefinity recommend you use. But out of interest, I've tried a couple of different other SSDs. And I've got a couple more on the way to try. So far, I've tried the Samsung 850 Evo and the SanDisk Ultra 2. Now, I'm waiting on a Samsung 860 Evo and a Samsung 860 Pro to try them. Um... But both the 850 Evo and the SanDisk Ultra 2, they were fine for the vast majority of frame rate and resolution combinations. So when you're getting into the sort of slow motion, high frame rate stuff, that's where those cards started to struggle. But the Kinemag was fine with that. Whether it's ProRes or Cinema DNG, if you go over 30 frames in 6K or 5K, that's when those cheaper SSDs start to struggle. But the Kinemag, obviously, is the OEM one, and that has been fine for absolutely everything. So if you're planning to do a lot of high-speed stuff at 5K or 6K in Cinema DNG or ProRes, then get Kinemags is my recommendation so far. The Kinemon is, is great in, like, 90% of scenarios. If you're outside and it's super bright, then you might struggle to see the Kinemon a little because it's not the brightest monitor. Um, so I recommend you buy the Sun Hood and use that. Um, and that will definitely help in those situations. There is also a bit of lag on the Kinemon. It's, I wouldn't say it's any worse than using like HDMI. Um, but there is definitely a little bit of lag on it. I like the grip as well because you can put the little grip bats in. And you can get up to an hour from a grip bat depending on sort of how much you're shooting what codec and resolution and frame rate and what accessories you've got powered from the the grip i mainly stick to v mounts 
but I'll usually have a grip bat in because then that means I can hot swap. So don't actually need to power down, which for some situations is really helpful. I'm a really big fan of the sort of almost red style that they've gone for with it because it's, it's a very similar form factor to red cameras. The fact that you've got the, the brain and then you've got all the extra modules like the side grip and the, the kinny back. And then obviously you can build it out as much as you want or you can really dial it back to just... I mean, you could just shoot with the body and the side grip and have a really compact form factor. But as I said, first impressions are really, really good. Um, I'm super impressed so far. Anyway, that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one, guys. Thank you.